Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Number two, the words of those in authority over us can limit us. Our pastors, there are some pastors who curse people. Hmm? They leave their church, they will curse you. Everything, they release curses. Your spouse, your, 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 your husband can speak words that limit you. Your wife, your mentors, your parents. Some of you have parents who called you all kinds of names and that has become a reality. Reuben spoke, um, uh, uh, Jesus, um, Jacob spoke over Reuben. He says, you are stable as water, you will not excel. Moses was about to go. So you shall live and not die. Your men will not be few. The power of those words were broken. And I speak over your life this morning. In the name of Jesus. Whatever curse words have been spoken over you. Over your jobs. Over your marriage. Over the things you are doing. You will live and not die. Those words are broken in the name of Jesus. Come on. I said curse words are broken in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of God. Your moment of increase is here. Church, get ready. We are going to harvest miracles in this last three months. Oh, yeah, I tell you, things are going to happen. Oh, things are going to happen. 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 The anointing of God is going to cause things to happen. Number three, the narratives we constantly hear, the narrative we listen to and imbibe through media. Hmm? Social media, traditional media Keep looking at the inflation figures Keep looking at marriages that are not settled Keep looking at people that are divorcing Those things can set narratives in our mind And place limitations That's why we say Be careful of social media It's not as if we want to limit your adult rights We're saying be careful of what you feed your spirit Let me tell you I mean sometimes we say this But it doesn't matter how the economy goes. The plans of God will never be stopped. Oh yeah. I said the plans of God will never be stopped. The plans of God will never be stopped. That includes God's plans for you. How many of you know there are people who are going to build this year? There are people who are going to own cars this year. And they are going to do it legitimately. There are people who are going to get to the next level of their work with God this year. And you can be one of those people. Stop studying inflation figures. Go and study what the word of God says concerning your increase. Renew your mind where supernatural provisions are concerned. The narrative we constantly hear and listen to and imbibe through media can limit us. What you constantly put in your face can limit you. You know, I walk in the blessing of God today in my life and I didn't grow up like this. You know, sometimes it's a struggle. Sometimes it's a struggle trying to describe to my youngest daughter how life can be something she doesn't understand. You know, have you ever talked to somebody who is a bit wealthy and they really cannot understand when you describe certain situations how possible that is? That's how it is with my daughter. She does not understand, for instance, she does not understand why some people don't have cars. She as she grows, she will. But for now, she does not have an idea. Why? Right? And while I was growing up, my own idea was everybody should not have a car because there were a few people who had a car. The first car my father had, very funny, the, 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 the radio, the stereo wasn't working. So we had to take a radio from the house. When we were traveling to the village, we take a radio from the house and put it in between the gear and the dashboard you know, with batteries, and that's how we play. And myself and my brother were very embarrassed because we know that's not how cars are supposed to function. You don't buy a car and then carry radio from the house and battery. <laughs> Praise God. You know, there were days in our house hmm? when the Eba was almost getting bad, they would now boil it and boil it and boil it and boil life back into the Eba. Eh? And then the soup is almost having some foams. 
Hmm? They will warm it, warm it, warm it dry and scrape the top, remove all the foam and warm life back into it. But you know, till I die for the rest of my life, that can never happen anymore. It can never happen. It, it can never happen. That, I passed that face long, long time ago. That same anointing is at work in your life. Because some of you, your stories is about to shift. I said your stories, practically, is about to shift. You're going to look back at your life and say, Hey, I was there, but I'm no longer there. Because an anointing of supernatural shift is coming on your life. And it's going to move your life from one extreme end to the other. It's going to happen by the Spirit of God. Number four, religious perceptions, thought as the commandment of God. Mark 7, 13. Mark 7, 13. It says you teach the traditions of men as a commandment of God. There are certain religious perceptions that can place limitations on your life. Huh? For instance, say you invalidate the word of God by your tradition, which you have handed down. And always say, oh, a Christian cannot be a politician. But meanwhile, in you is the seed of a governor. That can limit you. That can limit you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It can limit you. Some, some of you have been taught on courses so much. It has limited you. You always think you are cursed. You always think anytime you're about to get something, something bad happens. It's a religious limitation. Don't think that way. You see, one of the things I'm grateful for in my life that God helped me was to develop faith in ministry. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm telling you, to believe God for resources to do what God has asked me to do. And, and you had, I had to learn it. How to trust God. Let me tell you, I've been a pastor for many years. 13 years. I've pastored... This year will make it 13 years. I got into full-time ministry January 1st, 2007. Finished my NYC August 2006. So between August and January 2, I was praying, trusting the Lord to get clear direction. January 1st, 2007, I got into full-time ministry. And I'm telling you, in ministry, you would have many people promise you many things. That's why some pastors can be very bitter. People look at you and say, ah, don't worry, don't, ah, don't, no, 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 consider it done. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the fulfillment of the promise. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you don't learn how to trust God to meet your needs, your ministry will be under the, under the, the armpits of some people. So until you go, hmm? until they go, you won't go. Until you come, you won't come. You have to. And I want you to move your life to that state. You can't, you can't be alive. Right? And until an uncle looks upon you favorably, things don't move. You are saying that he's your destiny helper. You are not a robot. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm dealing with religious perception. I want to deal with that theology. That theology of destiny helper. Eh? Remove it from your head. It's limiting you. It's limiting you. How can your whole life be tight? If the man dies, what happens? Think that way. Eh? As you are now, your God just connected your whole life to one of your uncle. You are almost worshipping him because if the man calls you now that you should come, you will leave the service. Regardless of the anointing, regardless of it, you know that you won't pay rent if you don't move. You think that's, the, that's a good life? That's not a good life. That's not the life that God has ordained for us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God doesn't just want you to have a destiny helper. God wants you to be the one that helps people. He says, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. You are the seed of Abraham. You are the heir of Christ. Are you following what I'm saying? Come on, are you following what I'm saying? When people help you, they will be moved by the favor of God to help you. Glory to God. Are you here? When people give to you, they will be moved by the favor of God to give to you. 
Not out of pity. That's why sometimes, even as ministers of the gospel, we must not present God as a pitiable God. That's how we teach that makes God look very pitiable. That if people don't respond, things cannot be done. See, ministers must learn. Let me tell you, God can fund whatever he needs to fund from anywhere he needs to get it done. Hallelujah. I preached in Ghana four, four times. For, I go there every year before the COVID. I preached there four times. I went there this last June. It was COVID period. I preached, I preached less. Most times when I go, I'm preaching everywhere. I preach less. Preach in, maybe preach three times. Two, two services and one Sunday, two Sunday services or something. I mean, I got the highest <laughs> offering I've ever gotten from the nation in all the four years. If you had what I've been getting for the four years and what I got during this COVID period was higher. Way higher. It was like I went somewhere else to preach. And it was the first time I finished preaching and then someone takes me to the boutique and buys four suits for me, buys, I mean, the, the guy buys, I mean, he's not a member of the church, it was this guy, I finished preaching. Then I, fin- I stepped down. And then he brings his phone, he's showing me suits, he's showing me suits, so you know how the guest minister, you just want to be, I said, oh wow, lovely, lovely. He says, which one do you like? It was never in my mind, so I just said, oh no, maybe I just took one. He said, no, I want you to choose four. Drove me down to the boutique, bought four suits. He was like, would you like to wear one on Sunday? I said, uh, maybe. He said, what will you need to wear it? I said, I didn't come with a white shirt. He said, oh, I should take as many white shirts as I want. You know, that's where also your poverty mindset will not come. And I said, give me baskets. <laughs> you know, so I took only one. So, and then he says, okay, buy a shoe to wear it. And the guy buys everything that I need for me. It's the first time. And it's during COVID. I've been preaching where there was no pandemic. And he never bought a handkerchief for me. And I preach during COVID. And he bought four suits. I get into Lagos. And somebody says, go to somewhere. Pick up something. I pick up the parcel. I've got two suits in there. COVID. It's almost like saying, can you stay a bit? I don't think that COVID-19 should should affect the increase we experience. I don't think COVID-19, because God factored it in the plan. He knew we would be in a year like this. And even in the year like this, God is saying, do not decrease. Oh, come on, do not decrease. Do not decrease. Do not decrease. By December 31st, when you look back, this year is going to be better than all your other years put together. Because the hand of the Lord is going to come upon you. Glory to God. I don't believe our ministry should go down. We got the highest single offering we've ever gotten in eight years. This year in the ministry. Praise God. We can't share all the testimonies from the pulpits because that's not the essence. But we are not going down as a ministry. If, if you hear all those things that our churches were affected, we're this COVID, you know, don't count us among. We're not part of that statistics. We don't find ourselves in those numbers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's like you're going to check for exam. They now say, people that failed are here. People that passed are here. Then you are now walking to this side. It's because you know your name will be there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, so let me check there. Then from here, I will move. I will move to this side. That, that means you know that you have the possibility of failing. This ministry... COVID does not touch it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, literally, literally, this is not a statement of faith. Literally, we grew during that COVID period. When church came back, we had more people join us. True. We had more people join us. Yeah. Our downloads went up. I mean... In the last nine months, we've had 17,000 downloads of our messages. Our mailing list went up. We have like six, we have close to 600 people every week that receives our audio. So those people don't download, they just download directly from WhatsApp. Telegram channel is about 650 something people that are on Telegram. I mean, everything went off. Don't accept this general failure being passed around. It's not part of yours. Don't have a discussion about it. You are not in that list. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
When the Bible says all things are working together for your good, you can include the pandemic. We pray it goes away, we trust God for it to end, but it's not affecting our zeal. It's not affecting what God has called us to do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, when we're scheduling meetings to go to the nations, some people say, ah, no, this is not the safest time to travel. Then where should I travel? I'm not playing safe with my life where the gospel is concerned. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should. I'm just telling you my own life. (laughs) With long life, He will satisfy us and show us His salvation. You know you are living long, right? Come on, I say, you know you are living long, right? There is no disease in your body today that will terminate you. That disease is terminated in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Persistent failure. Things that can limit us. We're looking at source of limitation on Wednesday. Please make sure you are in the service on Wednesday. Or make sure you hook up online. Be part of it. Luke 5 5. It says, We have toiled all night and we've caught nothing. There's some of us that that's the picture of our life. Work and work and work. You can't still pay school fees. You work and work and work. You can't still pay rent. You work and work and work. You can't still eat good food. That story is changing. I thought someone heard me. I said, That story is changing. Praise God. Look at it. It says, Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. When you fail in certain things persistently, you resign your faith and say, you know what? I don't think. I don't think. This is my lot in life. Don't accept what God has not given to you. You know, even when you are, even when you are increased, believe God for more. Believe God for more. Because you can do more. I remember when I used to believe God to give certain offerings. Huh? I remember the first day I believed God to give 10,000 naira as an offering. Ah, that day was Christmas. Although it was October. I remember the conference. It was a conference of Nkola. I was coming to preach in Abuja. I, I was in youth service then. I went to the meeting. Wrote a check of 10,000. When I dropped it in the offering plate. Ah, Jesus. I didn't need a harvest from God. The joy alone was harvest. And then the Lord began to increase us. And the Lord began to stretch us. And the Lord began to increase us. You see, let me tell you something. When you see people say, I've given so so and so money to the Lord. I've given so and so money. You see, you must realize that if someone gives such an amount to the Lord, it's a huge sacrifice. Because there are many things that clamor for your attention. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and I, I am personally believing the Lord for an offering that I want to give at the end of the year to the Lord. I'm, I'm trusting the Lord for it. And I felt, I've given this amount for a very long time. I want to do something higher. I want to do something extra. Taking the limits of your offerings. Taking the limits of your, your giving. No, today we struggle with 10%. It's a shame. We struggle with it. And you know, there are people who will sell lands and give to God. and Bring cars and give to God. And people took that to the extreme, right? They, people, some people took that to the extreme. But at the same time, we have become so cautious that we are stingy. You know, that's, that's another extreme. You have become so cautious. Everything now is calculation, statistics. You want to give to God, you bring a abacus and pie chart and calculator, scientific calculator and manual calculator and calculate everything. When the Lord, when we, when we went on TV, the first time, when we went on TV, the first time we went on TV, I had some money in my dumb account and then I was the, the, the Lord just ministered to me. I got up that morning. The Lord ministered to me to send an offering to KCM. $500. And I was like, ah, okay. So I did it. Just responded and I sold it. And it was a month after that we got on TV. 
You see, <laughs> take the limits of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In your life, there are certain spiritual instructions God will give you this, this season. Either to give or to pray. Sometimes God will tell you, stand up and pray. Pray some more. Study the word. Lock yourself up. Get into the word. You know what God is doing? God is setting you up for the next level of your engagement. It, it must not necessarily be given money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. So, persistent failure can make people place limits on their life. When they haven't done certain things, they, you try this, you try this, you try this, you can resign yourself to faith. But those areas of failure, God's word is coming to those areas. Do you remember that? It is that we talk about it on Wednesday, how to break limitations. It's that same area he got a word from God. And what happened? He got a breakthrough. That same river. That same net. Are you following what I'm saying? God says, cast. see, there's nothing wrong with where you are. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. God's word is going to come. And it's going to remove that, that limit. See, when you work hard, it should show. When you work hard, it should reflect. There's no need working hard and there's no, no sign of it. And the truth of the matter is that some of the things that God is going to do in your life will not just be through your salary. It will be through the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Come on, I said it will be through the blessing of God. It will be through the increase of God. It will be through the favor of God. Glory to God. You know, some things happen. It's very, it's very funny how the Lord, you know, I don't really share some of these testimonies, but it's amazing. I remember, you know, I have a trip to Kenya in March, uh, in, in November, do some missions there. And uh, I wanted to buy the tickets. It was like maybe 400 and something thousand. I wanted to buy the ticket. And then... I've gotten the money for the ticket then. It's part of our missions fund in church, actually. And uh, the day I wanted to buy the ticket, I just felt a restraint. I didn't buy it. I just didn't buy it. I did it for like two, three weeks. I just felt a restraint. I don't want to buy it. It'll just be a restraint, something. I'll just leave it. And then I woke up one morning and I just saw 24 hour sale, Kenya Airlines, slash the ticket by like 40%. The ticket I was supposed to be like 450 thousand for a direct flight you know the other flights were longer came up to about maybe three hundred and seventy thousand and i bought it that's the favor of god and i could have done that three weeks on and then you see this and you're like oh god so when we say that god is going to move some things in you some of you are going to buy landed properties for half the price you're going, to, you're going to buy cars for half the price. You know, there are people who are going to travel out and they're going to say, you know what, we've got this car, just bring whatever you have and just take it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When I say things, is, things are going to shift in your life, shut your brain. Don't calculate how it's going to happen. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things that are spoken. Glory to God. Put your faith out there. Because by the time you calculate your salary and calculate what you are believing God for, your faith will fail. It will just cut rope. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Just put your faith in there and allow God be God. There are things I'm believing God for now. I can't even mention from here, but I'm believing God for them. I want to put my faith on the highest edge. Put it at the cutting edge. This thing has to work. This thing has to produce. This thing, because if we look at the rates we're going and the assignment God has on our head, we can't do it with the trickles that are coming in. We need to move into the flood stage of finances. Praise God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I was talking with a pastor the other day, two, two days ago, and, and, and I was talking with him and the Lord said, tell him you come to his church and help him. For two years, Every year you come help him and you will pay the ticket. You will pay the ticket. So I told him what the Lord said. I told him what the Lord said. He was surprised. He was surprised. I mean, they're young church that need help. And the Lord says, Well, tell him you'll be there. Next year and the year, the, the, and you will pay your own way there. They just get the meeting ready because I want you to help that church. That's, that's an extra assignment that God has put in our hands. And we have to get it done. 
Now imagine I come to church on Sunday and I say, well, I'm going to Kenya, ticket is 450 well, the Lord has asked me to go preach for somebody else, uh, it, ticket for those two meetings is 600000 You are going to, You are going to say, who, who sent you? Will you not say that? I mean, you want us to reach the nations, right? Well, say, just stay here. At least we want you to preach. We're not saying you should go anywhere. Let them download the messages. So you say that, listen, every one of us need to take the limits of God so we can get our assignment done. There are things the Lord is putting in your heart right now that will require finance. Listen, some, for some wives, the Lord is putting assignment in your heart that the money God wants you to put in that thing, you can't even ask your husband for it. I mean, imagine the Lord tells you, well, I want you to send maybe so, 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 so amount to this orphanage and be of a blessing to them. And all your husband's salary is that amount for one year. How will you ask him? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You've got to use your faith for that. You've got to use your faith for that. Persistent failure. When you have tried things and they are not working, don't accept that this is how my life is. That's not how your life is. Don't describe your life by your last failure. God is about to do a new thing. I said God is about to do a new thing. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805. 888-7575 Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng God bless you.